Good morning, welcome to Planet Mojo. Today, we're gonna fix the blower motor on our garage heater. This is a Mr. Heater Big Max 50,000 BTU heater and it was installed almost exactly a year ago, a little bit more than a year. And about a week, maybe 10 days ago, while it was running, all of a sudden the motor started making a terrible noise. I'm gonna let you hear what that sounds like if you didn't see the other videos. The blower for the flu is on right now and that's nice and quiet. Pretty soon the flame will kick in. There's the flame and as soon as the pipes in this area heat up this blower motor is going to kick on and you'll see what I'm talking about. Okay, I let this thing run its course, get up to temperature, and then shut off, and then get all the heat out of there, and turn itself off, and then I unplugged it. Now, we'll remove this motor. The motor has a cord that just goes through a pass-through right there into this section right here. I'm not exactly sure how it's connected on this side, so what I'm going to do is remove the motor. It will go up on top of the unit and then I'll move the ladder over here and we'll take this off and see how it's connected in there. But the first thing I need to do is inspect the motor that they sent me, the replacement motor. This again is a Mr. Heater unit. And it was initially hard to get a hold of them because this thing failed on the first cold snap, so I'm sure they were busy. But once I did get a hold of them, the motor came within, I believe it was two days. It came really fast. That is just an invoice. So we have a fan, fan blade, and a motor. And for those of you who didn't see the first video, or the first two videos maybe, the fan blade is not hitting the cage or the unit itself. I tried all different kinds of things to see what was wrong with it, and that was not the problem. Okay, let's go get that cage. So we just have two wires, no ground wire, and this one has a spade, and this one is just a stripped wire. That's interesting. We'll go get the motor, and we'll open up that other side and see what that looks like. All right. This Mr. Heater unit just has these four nuts holding the fan cage on. And yeah, hopefully I can get this strain relief off without breaking it. When I installed this, or actually before I installed this, I had to pre-install the gas line and the electric line and I had to 
figure out where the flue was going to go through the wall and position everything accordingly. There's a lot of videos on this heater. And then the propane conversion and the building of this mount. And finally installing and turning on the unit for the first time. It was nice and quiet the first time I turned it on. Well, all last winter, it was nice and quiet. Just out of the blue, it started making that racket. And like I said, the fan blade is not touching the cage anywhere, even though that's what it sounds like. And I've watched it run and the fan is not hitting the cage while you know it's not like wobbling or anything i've had this motor out and sitting on top of the heater and i held it in place and turned it on and it makes the same noise so it's not hitting the unit itself all right let me finish this and then we'll move to the other side and see how this wire is connected on the inside and see if we can get that strain relief or pass through see if we can get it out of there Give you a little look at what it looks like inside there. There is a temperature sensor sticking into it right there and these are the heat pipes. It has flames that shoot into these in this other compartment here. Okay. If you have uh, Mr. Heater Big Max like this I don't know if their other units are the same it's got two screws sheet metal screws on the front and they are a little bit shorter than the ones on the back here so you want to keep those separate And it's tucked into a slot right there. There we go. And See if we can get this strain relief off. It's got tabs. They usually they usually break when you're trying to get them off though. Let me try to get this off. Just to show you what the relief looks like. The cord goes through and then you have this little tab that goes on the top of it and then it pops into the hole. You gotta get on the inside here. Whoops. You gotta get on the inside with a needle nose and compress that and then push it out through the hole that way. And then you'll have one to put the new wire through there. So. It looks like I have to cut the zip tie right here. I really 
want to see both wires on the end of there. We have the black and white on there. Oh, there it is. Down here. All right, black and white. And then we'll trace them to where they go in here. The white. I believe that's it right there. Looks like the white is pigtailed right here. We'll have to take that off as well. And then the black goes on the circuit board here. And I'll find that as well. I'm going to go grab a light and I'll show you exactly where stuff goes. Okay, so if we take our motor wire, this is the black wire right here, and it's moving the white wire as well, but you can see that this black wire going to the circuit board, this back one, there's three black wires going to the circuit board. It's the furthest one here. So that's our line. And all of these commons are pigtailed right here. So, yeah, unfortunately, I'm going to have to cut this pigtail off and strip them wires and re-pigtail. It's pretty nice and neat in there. I'd like to keep it that way, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to. All right, well, I can cut this right here and pull that stuff out. All right, let me work on this a little bit. Okay, I cut that crimp off. Now, Here's my neutral. Nope, that's the wrong one. There's my neutral. Okay, there were four neutral wires connected in that crimp there. And you can see I cut the black right there, the power wire, because on the circuit board, there are a couple tabs that it could go on. I want to make sure that I put the new one on the right tab. I think there's only two, but it's hard to see. Yeah, it looks like there's only two, and it's on the back one. But just in case, all I did was cut that. Now I can pull this out of here. We still have it held right there, but I'm going to leave that and just pull it right through. And then we'll go get the new motor over here. Oh, that's too tight. I'm going to have to cut this. That's unfortunate. I got tons of zip ties, but I don't have any little tiny ones like this. And I don't want these wires going all over the place before I can get them reconnected. Just have to try to be careful. All right. Now, let's take this cage off of there. Okay. No chattering sound. It doesn't do it until it gets up to speed. All right, there's a set screw right here. 
I believe we have to take that off. Yes, we do. Let me find an Allen wrench for that. Holy moly. It's either really tight. Let's check this one. Might be a reverse thread. Nope. It's a normal thread. It's very, very tight. It's like stuck right there. Holy moly. There it goes. I don't think that had anything to do with, with why it was banging like that. Shouldn't have. You can see if that was loose, you can see how that would make a lot of noise, but it was not loose. As you just saw, it was very, very tight. I see what's going on. They have like Loctite or something on here. Still doesn't want to come off. Yeah, looks like they got a little bit of Loctite on there. Should come right off. Let's see how this one goes on and off. Appears to be very tight. I just tapped it a few times with the wrench and it popped right off. Alright, different size. Looks like those are 3 eighths. I can't get anything to make any noise. It's really baffling what is wrong with this. It really sounds like it's hitting the cage, but can't get it to make any noise without the motor running. This is a 115 volt motor, so I can test this original motor on an extension cord with just regular old line current, and I will probably do that just for the hell of it. Okay, like I said, this does not go on easy. I may have to tap it down. I don't 
Well, that went pretty good. It's got a little indent there. So it will be in the right place so that it's not hitting the cabinet. Just got to make sure that it's on that indent. Indent is about five eighths of an inch down. You could tighten this up right onto the shaft and it would be in the wrong position. That's it right there. The set screw has a point on it, so it's going to wobble around. In the indent until it's tightened down. And it didn't make any noise with the other fan either. So hopefully this works. Okay, let's go reinstall this. Well, actually, we can test this motor real quick because it should make noise just the way it is. We had it sitting on top of the unit like this and ran it and it was making all that racket and you could see that it wasn't just like this. It wasn't hitting the cage here. Not at all. All right. Let's test this real quick. Okay, so this motor does not appear to be making any noise. So what was making the noise? Trying again. Perfect. That's the way it should sound. All right, I went and got some Permatex. I'll take this back off and Permatex it. This is my setup. I don't encourage you to do that at home. I'm going to reassemble the old motor with the fan on it because looking at it, it looks like the shaft is damaged right where the fan connects. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see that or not, but there's a lot going on in there. So maybe the maybe the fan was or the blade was not attached right at the factory. I don't know what the deal is, but yeah, there's a lot of chatter on this, so 
that must have been the problem. Still really hard to see how it would do what it did, but it did. Yeah, there's the new and old, and this one is definitely damaged, the one that was on there. All right, little dab of Permatex, and we'll go get this put in. I'll show you this real quick. The strain relief it's in two pieces. You just push it onto the wire and take your lineman's pliers and squeeze it and push the whole thing through the hole. And that'll keep everything from vibrating. And then I zip tied the cord to my other cord here, my power cord. They had it zip tied to the cage here, but I'm not going to do that. Okay, so I have my hot plugged in over there. Now I just need to pigtail these four whites and do a little zip tying and we'll test it out. Okay, wire comes in here and I zip tied it again right there and then I spliced those four common wires together, the neutrals, and you can see back there that the hot lead is on the far spade there. Everything looks good. Made sure there's nothing in the cabinet. A subscriber of mine told me to check this line right here. It's a vacuum line and it checks to make sure that this flue isn't plugged up. If it is, it won't allow it to run. And you could see right through this line and it doesn't look like it's plugged up. But if you're having issues with this turning on, if that's plugged up, if the flue is plugged up, the burner is not going to light. So that would be the first thing to check right there. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. Okay, what I'm going to do is clear all this stuff off the top and I'm going to run it with this side panel open to make sure that everything's okay. And if it is, then we'll put this side cover back on and we'll be done. Okay. Our flu motor is on. We're going to get ignition now. Ignition. And then as soon as the tubes heat up, the fan will kick in. Beautiful. You can hear a little vibration on these struts, but you definitely aren't going to hear that from down here. Yeah, that's back to normal. That's nice. Beautiful. Okay, at some point, not today, I'm gonna run some tests on this and see if I can figure out what went wrong with it. That's really bizarre. It may be as simple as that set screw going bad. We'll give that a shot. If you want to see that or any other how-to's or woodworking or the building of a tiny house, make sure you subscribe and click on the update icon. 
If you have any questions or comments, make sure you put them in the comment section below. And if you share the video and or give it a like, it helps the channel out greatly. Thanks for watching and have a great day.